kind of box do you live in? I'm not talking about an actual box, like a shoe box or a cardboard box. I mean, when I say things like get out of the box or think outside of the box, what does that mean for you? For me, growing up, I wasn't even aware that boxes existed. All I knew was that I loved science. And I pursued science probably at the expense of the irritation of my mother. <laughs> I would go around the house mixing things that did not belong together, like baby powder with nail polish, with sugar, just to see what would happen. And eventually my sights turned towards the sky and I decided that I wanted to become an astronaut. And I was one of the fortunate kids to earn a scholarship to attend space camp. And space camp was awesome. I learned so many things. I learned about all of the careers that work together to get somebody into space and to study space. There were physicists, geologists, chemists, anything you could think of. And that was great to know because I ultimately found out at space camp that I was afraid of heights, <laughs> which meant that my dreams of being an astronaut, probably not a great career for me but there were so many other careers to explore, and I did. My love for science grew over the years, and eventually I earned a bachelor's degree and a master's degree in biology. And my specialty was in molecular biology, which means that I study how molecules interact with each other to generate life processes. And I loved science so much that I wanted that to be my job title, and I made it so. I actually graduated with a master's degree on a Saturday and started my career that very same Monday as a corporate cancer researcher. And I was going to do science. That was going to be my job title. I was going to get paid to do what I love to do most. And I wore that with a badge of honor. I was so proud. And I would come to work every day. I'd do the science. I'd go home with a smile on my face. But over time, I realized that something was off, something was different. My experience as a corporate scientist was much different than my experience as a student scientist. I was lonely. I was incredibly lonely. Not only was I just doing the science, but I was doing it alone, where other scientists were running their experiments in the lab, having chit chat, talking to each other, getting to know their values, beliefs, what they do outside of work, sometimes making plans with each other outside of work, developing friendships and bonds. I was never a part of that. I was being left out and I was alone. And I also noticed that I was the only person who looked like me there. But nevertheless, I continued to do the science. After all, I love science. But over time, it was wearing down on me. Eventually, the lab did hire somebody who did look like me. They weren't a scientist. They were a janitor, but still, I was happy that they were there. And that day, I'll never forget, because my coworker turned to me and said, you should be happy that you're not the token black anymore. And that crushed my spirit. I couldn't believe that she said that to me. And one of my greatest fears was confirmed. And that fear was that even though I was coming to do the science and I loved science and had spent my whole life loving science, that even though I was coming to work with this passion and joy and what I did, it wasn't enough. And that other people were still seeing me as different and not equal. And that I was actually a token um, and so when she said that to me, I cried. She left. She wasn't aware that she had hurt me so deeply, but I went back to my desk. I cried silently, wiping the tears from my face in pain. And I had experienced that pain for the months to come. There would be other occasions where I would be treated differently than everyone else, and it would hurt me. And I had to make the decision to leave. And I'm really fortunate to have multiple interests in that not only do I enjoy doing the science, 
but I love teaching the science. And I was lucky enough to obtain a position teaching science at a community college in my city. And that was one of the most rewarding experiences I've had as a scientist. And I think that it was not only rewarding for me, but also for my students. We loved interacting with each other. And not only were we teaching each other things, but we were also engaging in some really awesome teamwork. And we learned so much from each other. But let me tell you what happened on my first day on that job. One of my coworkers decided that because I couldn't find my mailbox in the faculty mailroom, that she was going to call the police on me and have me arrested. And ultimately the conversation between she and I went like this. Um, she saw me entering the mailroom, physically blocked me from entering the room because she didn't think I belonged there. Once I got into the room, I was looking for my mailbox. I wasn't sure where it was. It was my first day of work. And she asked me for my photo identification, which I provided. It was my faculty identification that had my photo, the school name, the year, my position, and the department. And even after all of that, she still decided that the identification was fake and it wasn't mine and I didn't belong. And ultimately she told me that I didn't look like I belonged in the department and that I could work there. So she was gonna call the police and have me arrested. And at this point, I was frustrated because I was noticing a pattern of me coming into the workspace, whether it be in the lab or at a college where people are doing science, teaching science, and my coworker is telling me that I don't belong that I'm a token, or that I don't look like I should be there when I had the qualifications and I deserve to be there just like everyone else. And so I took a period of reflection and I looked at why was this happening to me? There has to be a reason for this pattern. And during this time of reflection, I started a doctorate in science education and I found out in my own research that there are decades and decades and decades of researchers asking this question of what do you believe a scientist looks like and what i found in other people's research is that when they ask people to draw or describe what they believe a scientist looks like the most frequent was the most frequent response is that a scientist is a white man and I am not a white man. I am a black woman. Um, even in the media, scientists researching the media representation of scientists find the same perpetuation that scientists are white men. And there's nothing wrong with being a white man. There's nothing wrong with being a, a black woman, but the issue becomes when these messages are perpetuated from the media into real life. So much so that when I enter a workspace where people are doing science and teaching science, that people can't connect the dots and understand that I do belong and that I am a scientist. And we also know from research that the media does impact our real life perceptions of the world around us. So with that in mind, I set out on a journey to redefine the image of a scientist and diversify that image. And that is how Big Old Geeks was born. Track and field discus. Cut it, run it, cut it. Run we some big old, big old, big old geeks. Cut it, run it, cut it. We some big old geeks, but the tennis place up. You van the walls on my onyx. Scientists twerking iconic. I'm doing both on bionic. Nut if you buck periodically, okay. I can like an enzyme and we cutting it up. Proteins in the gel and we running them up. See, I'm a chocolate girl, skin Reese's pieces. I run this thing like electrophoresis. So you might ask, first of all, how did I get my three friends <laughs> to do something like that with me? That's a different story. But today I'm gonna tell you that what you just saw was my rejection of any box I've ever sensed that someone else has placed me in. 
And not only the boxes that other people have placed me in as a scientist, but also boxes that I've placed myself in. Believe it or not, making that was hard for me. Even though I wanted to represent myself authentically, this was one of the first times that I had let go and said, you know what, I don't care what anyone thinks I should be doing, how I should walk, how I should talk, how I should talk about science and do my science. I'm just going to do it. And that was hard. It was uncomfortable, but I knew it needed to be done. And I knew that other people needed to see that. And so I put it on the internet, <laughs> crossing my fingers, hoping that it was not going to be the end of my career, that the sky wasn't going to fall and crash on me. And instead that I would inspire people around the world to do their science as their unapologetic selves. And not only did the video get hundreds of views, it got hundreds of thousands of views and it spread around the world. And I began receiving messages of support, messages that really showed me that people needed to see this. And so I centered my doctoral study around the video. And I wanted to study the impact of the music video and continue the research that has been done for decades on the representation of scientists in the media. So I collected data from 50 black women, half of which are in STEM careers, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, and the other half who are in careers that are not STEM related. And what I found was in agreement with what was found in previous research and that 98% of my participants also said that the most common representation of a scientist in our country is of a white man, but also that they don't relate to these images, that when they see these images of these scientists, that they're not connecting with them. They don't see it as them. On the other hand, when I showed them my music video, they did connect. They did feel like they could do science. Women who had STEM careers felt like they had the strength to continue on. They felt represented. They felt included. They felt seen. And honestly, one of the most exciting findings of my research was that the women who did not have STEM careers said that they most likely would have pursued a STEM career if they had this type of representation, the type of representation that they saw in my music video years before they began their own careers. And this is all because I decided to step out of my box one day. So I want to ask you all, what kind of boxes do you live in? What kind of boxes are you perpetuating with your thoughts, with your actions, the way you walk, talk, dress, the way you speak? Is it really who you are? Is it what you think other people want you to be? Are you being your unapologetic self? Maybe you don't do what I do. I'm not asking you to make a rap music video professing to the world that you love science, but maybe it's a little thing every day. Maybe it's speaking up for yourself in a time where in the past maybe you wouldn't have because you were afraid that someone would perceive you as a stereotype or as something that wasn't you. Maybe you should say that one thing that makes somebody just a little bit uncomfortable, which is the truth. Maybe it just means that you take that red dress out of the back of your closet, the one that's work, work appropriate, and wear it fearlessly, unapologetically, because you bought that dress because you liked it. It's the little things that count. I challenge you to get out of your box every day. And if you're like me, you're going to tell the world that you're a big old geek too. <laughs>